I just had a very funny experience, Pastor Mark. It's Rodney's board meeting tonight. And I'd forgotten all about it. And I'm supposed to be on a phone link up. And I just had this incredible sense. Contact Christy. And I said, Christy, just let me know when this board meeting's on. I need to know. She contacted me back. She said, it just started. <laughs> and so I rang through. And they welcomed me into the board meeting. And I said, vote yes on everything you want a yes on. And I was officially welcomed. And, and I prayed the opening prayer to the board meeting. And then said, bye, I'm going to preach now. Goodbye. Have they got their camp meeting at the moment? Is their camp meeting on or is that finished? It's done. Done. Done and dusted. How are you, folks? It's Monday night and you're out. You're out here. Good to see Norma back. She got a great touch of God last night. That was all right, wasn't it? She came through. Have you come another three hours? Look at that. She couldn't do that. She's facing surgery with that arm. She's healed by the power of God. People got healed. One of my brothers, his ankle was up like a balloon, and uh, the power of God hit him, and his ankle went right down to normal. He walked out with a normal ankle last night. Uh, yeah. Uh, where's my old mate Jono? Where's Jono hiding? Where's Jono? And you had uh, something, didn't you? Tendonitis. And it just clicked. I felt it just go click. And Pastor said, there it is. And uh, up it went in the air, healed by the power of God. But listen, I feel something, I can't explain it, but I feel as though really there is something happening. And uh, it may not seem massive in scale, but there's something being prepared yeah. right now that, I has not seen nor ear heard. I love, I love the scripture in Habakkuk, which we take out of context quite regularly. Look and be astonished, for I will do a work in your midst, which even if described to you, you will not be able to believe it, even if it were described to you. Of course, it was describing the coming of the Chaldeans to judge them, but we use it on, in blessing. And so we take hold of it as Christians and say, God is going to do a work in the midst which even if described to us, Brad, Mrs. Brad and Junior Brad, this week to get through the week and cover their house payments and cover their food and then go into the next week and do the same and do the same the week after, that is not living. It's existing. The whole of creation is groaning. They're waiting for something. They're waiting. California is waiting for something. America is waiting for something. Australia is waiting for something. Japan is waiting for something. Mongolia is waiting for something. They don't know what it is. They do not know. They think they know what it's not but they're not sure what it is until they confront the reality. The Bible says the whole of creation is earnestly waiting the manifestation of something. The word manifestation, showing forth, unveiling, revealing of something. The whole of creation is eagerly awaiting, and the word there for earnest expectation is that of turning the head and reaching in sheer anticipation of something. The whole of creation, the whole of America. America's got everything. It's possible to have everything but have nothing. Without Christ, I went to Disneyland the other day that's the nearest to heaven some people will ever get. It's the nearest they get. And they start trying to fulfill. We sat next to a lady. I hope she's not watching now, but we went and saw, what was the show, Dan? We went and saw, oh, Aladdin. It was incredible. I was overwhelmed. I nearly bought the T-shirt and came tonight with the magic carpet. 
I sat next to Snow White, a dear lady there. I said, how many times have you seen this? She said, 400. I've seen it once, I think it'll satisfy. I think I'll be going again. 400. I said, you've been coming to Disney for a long time. She said, I think, I, I think she said she was conceived on the property. <laughs> Something, sorry, that's not very good. Sorry, I take that back. I don't mean that. It was like she was born, did she say she was born on the property or? That, that, sorry, that first one was a complete Freudian slip. I think she was conceived on the property. I think she was born near the property. Uh, that, I didn't mean that. I'm not trying to be crude. This place is not a place to be crude. The pulpit's not a place to be crude, so that was an accident. But uh, forgive me for that. Dan, help me out of this situation. <laughs> but I thought, an addiction to Disneyland is not what I want. But she's looking for something. She finds that there's some excitement in the colour and the costumes that sort of stirs something within her. Some people don't even... She's at least looking for something. I commend her on that. A lot of people have given up looking. They're just gazing at nothing and come to the idea that the sooner they're through this life and out of this, the better. A lot of young kids are taking their lives because... All they can see is empty water with nothing stirring as far as they can see, so they take their lives. But the whole of creation is groaning, deep down in here, groaning, because they're waiting for something to come into their life. And the thing they're waiting for is the manifestation of the sons of God. Now, there's been gymnastics done with that scripture. But all it is is this. My Bible says, for this purpose was the Son of God manifest that he might utterly destroy the works of the evil one. And so what is society waiting for? They are eagerly awaiting the manifestation of those who have been baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost who will come in the same power, baptized in the same mighty Holy Ghost who will come in the same power and the same demonstration to set at liberty those that are bound and destroy utterly all the works of the devil and set at liberty those that are bound. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon us because he has anointed us. to preach the good news to the poor, to bind up the broken heart, to set at liberty those that are bound, to set the captives free, to declare the acceptable day of the Lord, and so on. The world is waiting, not for more church. They're waiting for individuals to come into their life carrying something inexplicable that they can't explain, that they don't even know how to deal with it. It is so supernatural. So astronomical what you're carrying that they do not know what to do with it. That's why when Pastor Mark went into Nepal and stood up on the platform and said hello, the Holy Ghost filled that place and they began to scream because suddenly the waters of the supernatural began to stir incredibly expectation expectation the greatest thing that we can have as Christians is expectation salvation and living right for God but then an expectation the Bible says now faith is the substance the hypostasis hooper down starts as I stand on things hoped for the, the word hope in the Greek is a weak word the word and I've been trying to work it out with Pastor Elpsis, Elpis, I used to call it Elpsis, which literally means confidently and certainly expected. Now faith is the standing under and holding strong to the things confidently and certainly expected. I'm looking out tonight at a living pool that's getting ready to stir. But it's not just going to stir in one place. It's going to stir right through the building. People are already beginning to stir in expectation that tonight is your night.
people are already feeling a sense that tonight the power of God is going to shake forever. The God of the impossible is here. You see, this man was looking at the water when suddenly a man stood in front of him and said, are you willing to be made whole? And I submit to you tonight that Jesus is standing here. Right with you now. Right in that book. Now, out of my mouth, but it's his words. Are you willing to be made whole? Are you willing? God's saying, are you willing to let me make you whole? Some of you come. Sister came three hours. Have you stayed here overnight or did you go back and come again? Did, did she go home last night or did she stay here last night? Stayed here. You got healed too last night, didn't you? You both did. She came three hours because something within her told her that if she came last night, the waters were stirring. And others have come tonight. Hallelujah. 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 He's here to make you whole. He's here to set you free. He's here to set you free. I could preach on here and I could talk about the little woman, the issue of blood who came and she kept on saying, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I know, I know, I know. Talk about blind Bartimaeus who stood by the roadside with an expectation that in the very short time as Jesus walked past, if he could reach out, he would have his miracle. I don't feel that I should preach any longer. I feel that we're ripe and ready to receive a miracle from God. Ripe and ready to receive a miracle. Let's just stand for a moment. I've learned over the years that it's not how long we preach, especially if we're, pre if, if we're preaching for healing. It's knowing when we've hit that point where God's ready to work. And sometimes it takes a while, other times... You can step up into the platform and immediately God says, move straight into it now. One of the great keys to healing is to know when to move. The Spirit of the Lord is just right now here in strength. I'd be wrong to keep preaching because he, he wants to touch you. He wants to touch you. Lift your hands, lift your hands. Jesus. Brother John, bring your, bring your wife down. Dr. John and Mrs. John. Lift your hands. Just stand there and lift your hands. Just come a little further. Look up here. Look up. Look around this way. Look there. My God, let your power go right through them. Take it down. Just take it all. 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 Don't drop them. We're don't drop anyone. No dropping. No dropping. Let's avoid the dropping. We're going to cut the dropping back. Jesus. Jesus. It was noised abroad that God was in the house. Lizzie, Lizzie, come here. You say, why aren't you praying for the sick? I just see some people so ripe for the touch of God. that I just want to lay hands on a couple. Lift your hands, Lizzie. This girl's one of the most extraordinary young women that you'll ever meet in your life. In your life. One of the most talented, brilliant, loving, honest, serious, wonderful young lady that I've probably met in my life. Jesus, just touch her. <sighs> Sister, do you need a miracle tonight? Sister with the like a magenta top, like a reddish top. Do you need a miracle tonight? Come here. How many people have come a long distance? There's a young lady at the back. 
that she's got the little baby and you need a miracle. Just come, just come. You need healing? Would you know if you've got it? Lift your hands. Are you in pain right now? But you'd know if that you had that miracle. Do you know how hard it is to get healed? Do you know how difficult it is to get healed? The Bible says it's the children's bread. I'm staying with the Spitzbergens. I never have to worry about asking for bread and I'm just a visitor. But you're one of his kids. His kids, they eat plenty of bread. They just raid the fridge. I've learned to. I'm getting good at it. Just want some bread? Go grab it. They've got plenty of it. Just go now. Take your healing in Jesus' name. This young lady needs a miracle. Can I share a little? She doesn't have this miracle. She's got to have some treatment that's quite a dangerous treatment. I would rather her have a touch of the mighty King of Glory. I want you to lift your hands up to Jesus. How far have you come tonight? Where? Claremont. Where's that? Well done. I've come from Australia. I swam. Father, I rebuke this condition. I rebuke it tonight and command its power to go. Jesus' name. Brother back there has got the cutest baby, little fella. What's his name again? He's the most hilarious little fella, isn't he? He's hilarious. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring him down and show you. Later. He's just, he's unbelievable. Sister at the back that needs a miracle, I want you to come. Right at the back with the blonde hair. I talked to you earlier. Yeah, lady at the back. Yes, come. She needs a miracle. She seriously needs a miracle tonight. And the miracle worker is here. King Jesus is here. It's in his name. His power's here and his name's here. And we're here. And we're looking for a miracle. You've come for a miracle, full of expectation. If you're able to believe, nothing's impossible. One of my very best friends was diagnosed with asbestosis of the lungs. Asbestosis. He became very ill, very, very ill. And in fact, it got worse and worse. They were draining all the stuff out of his lungs and he was in terrible trouble. Given, I think, the maximum that people in Australia have lived with asbestosis is 18 months. Well, it got to the point where they came to his house and they brought a bed in that could be easily raised and lowered. And they brought a whole lot of stuff um, for uh, injections for pain, um, morphine and so on. And all of a sudden he looked at this bed and he said, no way. No way. Take the bed out. Take everything out. They said, sir, if you do, we, we can't help you after that. He said, I don't care, I'm going to live. The bed was taken, the morphine was taken. Just before I left, the doctors told him there's not one trace of cancer in his body. <laughs> Jesus, not one trace. We rebuke this. We rebuke this condition and we curse it. I want one other guy to come with me. A couple of guys all the time, is that okay? Let this thing go in the name of Jesus. Jesus' name. Anyone in this building with tumors or lumps, I want you to come. Anyone with tumors or lumps, just come. Any growths, tumors, lumps, just come. Just come. Don't wait, just come. Just come. Don't hold back. Wait for someone else. If that's you, come. Just come. Jesus. Hey, your sister, let's have a miracle, shall we? Will we have one? We're going to have one right now. Let's have one right now. Let's have one right now in Jesus' name. Gee. Oh, yes. Let's have a miracle. Let's have a miracle. You ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Take it now in Jesus' name. Are you ready? Jesus' name. Geneva. How are you? I haven't seen you for a couple of days. 
Good to see you. Looking wonderful. There's a few Genevas around. Jesus, touch and healed. Hey, my brother, you ready? Loose by the power of God. Let that thing be gone. Whatever it is. Whatever it is. If you have anything cardiovascular, anything cardiovascular, my blood pressure used to run 180 over 110. Couldn't get it down. The doctor told me when I was 35, he said, you'd be dead by 40. My blood pressure is always 120 on 80, 85. I'm pretty fat. Look a bit like Tweedledum. But I tell you, I've got good blood pressure. Well, you don't need it. I used to have it. What do you need? What have you come for? Just come. We'll lift your hands. That makes a lot of sense. Jesus. Well, there you go. This is the power of God. That's a good touch. Take a seat, folks. Jesus. I want everybody to reach out to the Lord tonight. I want you to reach out to God. The anointing is over this place tonight like a cloud. There's a glory cloud in this place. I want that brother here, brother with the, just come, brother stripes, brother, brother stripes there, blue, blue stripes, grey stripes, blue and grey stripes, blue, grey, ready colour stripes. Jesus, come here, Brookster. Is that Brook? No, it's not. Who's that with the spectacles back there in the back row? Come here, young lady with the spectacles. Just come. I want to pray for you. Just come. Just come. My good friends, uh, uh, Terry and Mike. No, it's not. It's, uh, I've forgotten. Sister Harley Davidson and brother used to surf a lot. <laughs> he still does. He's got a 19-foot plank. Rides the wild surf. Jesus. Jesus. That's the surf. Not well. But I was out there, bleached hair. My God, what do you need, bro? Power from heaven. Sister, you've got the glory all over you. It's the glory of God on you right now, right now. Hey, Brookston, how are you? Great. Touched with power, you're a good young lady. These guys here, they said to me last night, this is, this is it, isn't it? This is the real thing. This is the real thing, this is the real thing. Man, I felt that one. If you're watching at home. Jesus. Jesus. Sometimes, you know, you come into church and uh, you have an encounter that seals something. Seals something. Nothing's... Bible talks of being sealed. Come here, Rob. Nothing talks... Nothing... Uh, more profound than having a sealing of the Holy Ghost in your life. Lift your hands, Rob. He's a big brother, I tell you. He's eaten all his vegetables as a child. Jesus, Jesus. Oh, my God. Jesus. Come here, brother. Uh, brother smiling quite a bit. Let's come over here next to Brother Stripes. In fact, come in next to Sister Leopard Skin. Jesus. Power. Power from heaven. <laughs> I've always had certain faith for, for bones. Broken bones, feet, hips, backs, neck bone, head bone. Neck bone connected to the shoulder bone, quite good in shoulder bones, believe God. Back bone, hip bone, connected to the leg bone. Leg bone connected to the knee bone. If you've got problems with your bones, I hear the word of the Lord come down right now. Come right now, come right now. Come down, come down, come down, come down, come down. What do you need? What do you need? What's wrong? Scoliosis, come here. Come here. 
Father, right now, let your mighty healing power flow through her. No, in Jesus' name. Let God touch you. Let him fill you right through this building. Let him fill you. Let him just encounter God. Jeez, you four Spitzbergens, one, two, three, four of you, come down here. No, 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 no. Walk not away, Dan. Walk not away. <laughs> not yet. Sister, that's the power of God. Yeah. Power from heaven. Take it all. That's it. What are you needing? What, what? Fair enough. Jesus. This brother here came last night. Tell us about your ankle last night. Uh, Saturday, I messed it up. Uh, some tables fell in it as we were lowering the trailer, and it was pretty well swollen up. And I had a pretty big, bad bruise, about eight or nine inches big and round. And after you prayed, it, it was just gone. Gone. So Jesus took it. Yes. Power from heaven right through you. Whatever else you need. Catches, catches. Do not run, not away. Run, not away. Leave me not. That's English for don't go away. Jesus power from heaven yeah I know Norma have you had a lovely day a couple of guys quickly mm. she said that last night she was so excited and she forgot to tell you her, uh, she was talking about grandma's feet okay and her, uh, she already had twice she had surgery and her toes they're yeah. twisted so yeah. one goes on top of she already had surgery okay. in each feet Okay. And they're going back, okay. growing back. They're going back? They're going back. That's again. from last night? No, no, no. What I mean is okay. they're growing back. With All right. She had her hands healed last night, her shoulder healed. She got baptized in the Spirit, but forgot to tell us about her feet. So she's come back for another burst. And God's good on shoulders, hands, and he's good on feet. Give me a hand. Give me a hand. Father, right now, let your healing power come upon her. From her head to her toe in Jesus' name. There it is, my God. Now, just let that work. Come here, sister. Come back. You need some more. <laughs> Lift your hands. Do you feel the power of God? Do you feel his anointing? Yes. I think she does. Yes, I sense that. Power of God's here, Pastor Mark. How are you, my friend? Isn't it great, Annie, just to be alive? Isn't it? I have more fun at the Spitsbergens than a barrel of monkeys, I'm telling you. I create mayhem. Mayhem. With the Spitsbergens. You're in, in intense pain? Are you now? Go! And don't come back. Hello, Michaela. How are you? Just receive the anointing. Just receive it. Just receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Will, have, have a touch. Have a touch of the anointing right now in Jesus' name. How are you, bro? How are you, my friend? Do you surf? You surf, don't you? Yeah, they were telling me about you. What is the biggest wave you've been on? Have you surfed Mavericks? I did. Well, yesterday, I went down there. 40-footer, straight in. No, it's a lie. I'm lying. Jesus. No. Jesus. Lift your hands, bro. They reckon you're pretty good, though. What do you need right now? Your knee? Are you ready to be healed? Are you ready? Take it now in Jesus' name. Move it about. Do you feel that, Dan? How is it? How is it? Give me a score. Healed. Healed. It's the way to go. You'll be right now. Get on some of those biggies. Write them in. Write them in. Write them in. Write them in. Jesus. Do you know, one of the things the Lord told me years ago, never take the glory. You know the scripture that says, not many mighty, not many noble 
God has jo- chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise, the base things, to confound the wise. He did explain to me that I was one of those. Um, as, they, as they looked at Peter and John and recognized that they were unlearned and ignorant men, I think the word for ignorant is idiotus. And uh, not many mighty, not many know what God's chosen the foolish. I think it's the word, Greek word moreno, from which we get morons and idiots. And so the Lord said to me, you're a very good candidate. You fit it in well. He didn't really. He didn't really. I made that up just to be stupid. But, but I did have a guy come up one day. He said, Tim, if God can use you. He said, I get inspired seeing you. I said, oh, fantastic. Thanks. I said, why is that? He said, because if God can use you, he can use anybody. And uh, there's some truth in that because my whole life is not, is not how good I can be. It's just how dependent I can be. Because out here... He's, he's just here. His power's here. Not, not just because I'm not because I'm here. Maybe a little bit because I'm here. Because I like to think I bring something. But there's an awful lot of prayers gone here. Some little old lady with silver hairs prayed all week that the preacher won't look a complete idiot at the front, but God will be there. And at the end of the day, when someone gets healed, we don't know how to heal them. I don't know how to heal Norma's foot or hand. I don't have a clue. My medical skills with my kids, if I could get a Band-Aid on straight, I gave myself 10 points. The Lord said to me, every time there's a miracle, it bears witness to something. Acts 4.33 says, with great power, they bore witness of the fact that Jesus was raised from the dead. And every time there's a miracle, it is a and evidence of the fact that Jesus is raised from the dead and the price that was paid for people to get healed, none of us have paid. I certainly didn't pay. The Lord said to me, at any stage, did you allow your back to be scourged like a ploughed field? I said, no. And the Bible says, by his stripes, we are healed. And that the miracle, any miracle we see, how dare we ever think that we can take the glory? We've just got the privilege of being around about. And I find that as long as I keep giving God the glory, and just being me and not trying to pretend that I'm something, but it's all him. He says, you stay humble, give me the glory, and I'll just keep doing it. So I just keep giving Jesus the glory and just recognizing that I'm just a piece of clay pipe, and that's my privilege, just be a pipe, clay pipe, through whom he can flow. And so are you. And the Bible says these signs will follow not just the visiting preacher, but... These that follow, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they'll cast out devils. They'll do all these miracles. Follow you, this sister. Look at the glory of God. I mean, the presence of God is just, you can't explain it, but it's beautiful. You see the glory on these folk lying here, and it's beautiful. It's, it is so, the presence of God is so pristine, pure. There is a river that flows from the throne of God and from the Lamb, the streams whereof, shall make glad the city of God. It's pristine. That laughter echoes in heaven. Let it flow, brother. Give it a good dose right out of your belly. I like that man. He's a character. I picture him as a young fellow, hair down his back somewhere out there in the surf. Probably a little bit of hooch. Just out there. One of the lads surfs up. Whew, it just reminds me when I was a young fella. Nine foot eleven plank. Most of the dings on it were when it came off the car onto the road. It was custom built for someone else. It's an old five-stringer. Do you remember the old timber five-stringers? Before your time, Mark, was it? (laughs) Hello? Is Mark asleep? Oh, God, it's good. Do you know, you can just sit in the presence of God like this and not do anything, just enjoy him delight in him. 
Just delight in Him. Enjoy Him. Just enjoy His presence. I feel like you're just floating out into the ocean somewhere. I feel like lying down on the platform doing an Ayers Rock imitation. Let Him touch you. Let Him touch you. Let the weight of His presence touch you. Hallelujah. Drink it in. He is saturating you. Saturating you. Saturating. the boundless waves of the glory of the King. The Lord has brought me into his banqueting table, a banqueting hall. I think he wants to take us beyond the banqueting hall and take us through his mansions and show us his glory and lead us deeper and wider. And Paul writes and he says that you might know the love of Christ, the, the length and breadth and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God and now as a result that you might be filled with all the fullness of God now unto him who's able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond anything that you could ask think dream or imagine according to the power the dunamis the dynamics of God that right now indwells you unto him be glory in the church what a what a promise the Bible says in Colossians you are complete in him which is the head Ephesians 1, uh, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Ephesians 1, that, that, uh, that we might see with the eyes of the Spirit the unlimited magnitude of divine power that is us who believe according to the working of His mighty power, which He exerted in the dead body of Jesus when God raised Him from the dead, set Him in His own right hand in heavenly places far above all rule, principality, dominion, power, and put all things under his feet, which is the church, the fullness of him that filleth all and in all, and then, and you hath he quickened who were dead. That's in italics, in trespasses and sin. You, verse 5 says, you hath he quickened together with Christ, and raised together, seated together. We're seated in heavenly places. We have bold access by the blood of Christ into the very tangible presence of God in his own throne room. I love what pastor said last night that people think that heaven's brass. No, we have bold access to walk into his presence if we'll take the time. How many people need a healing touch still in this building? Would you lift your hand? I want you to leave your place and come right now. I want you to leave your place. Come straight down here now. Give me a hand. Give me a hand. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Move it about, Annie. Strain to hand carrying groceries. Come over here, my brother. Okay, come right here. Lift your hands high, sir. Father, in Jesus' name, I rebuke the condition. Amen. And preach its power right now. Come up here, my friend. Healed by the power of God in Jesus' name. Come up here, guys. What do you need, champion? He's had a lot of attacks in his life. Yep. God wants to destroy him. God wants to pull him up. Okay. Father, touch him. We break this thing off his life and everything that's against him. No! In Jesus' name. What do you need, sir? I need to be a powerful. Lift your hands. Power from heaven. My God. Hey, yeah. champion. Stuttering. Father, let this stuttering cease tonight. Go. What do you need? That's it. Take it, whatever it was. Yeah, no, it looks like you got it. Hello. That's the anointing. That's the anointing. That's the anointing. That's the anointing. Thank you. Jesus. Hey, my friend. How are 
You're looking pretty tropical. Hey, Looks great. I had to meet you last morning. Pardon? I, I did meet you last morning. I've lost That's a little bit. Time. Lost yeah, a little God bit. God bless you. I've just gone from massive down to very fat. Yeah. But I'm going better. Yeah, I feel good too. Yeah. Chief! Just touch my brother. Touch him. Chief! What's your name? Greg. Touch Greg, Father. God bless you, my friend. Oh, you. Take your healing. Take your healing. Start to move it about. Start to test it, folks. Start to test it. You're watching at home. Are they on the internet tonight? Yes, you are. Oh, welcome. Sorry I've ignored you. Take your miracle at home. Right now, whatever it is. Emphysema. Heart condition, go! I prayed for a young lady some years ago over in Australia. One of her shoulders was five inches lower than the other because of a curved spine. We watched as her shoulders came level. She was married three weeks later. Her mother sat behind her with a beautiful wedding dress on with her square shoulders and wept like a baby and sent us pictures of the girl. There's someone right now, and your shoulders, because of a twist in your, in your back, are down right now. Lift your arm, lift your arm, lift your arm, lift your arm, and take your healing. Take your healing. Take your healing. Take your healing. Who in this building has problems with, with your neck, twisting your neck? You can twist it one way, but it's always been difficult the other. Is that you? Come here, come here. Who else? There's someone else with that. Your neck is restricted one way. Just come. Who else? Who else? Just come. Just come, sir. That's the power of God all over, sister, here right now. You ready to be healed? All right, I tell you, I want you to do something. As soon as I touch you, turn your neck the other way. Start to turn it. Right now, just start to turn it. Start to turn it. Move it around both ways. Start to move it. Move it the other way. Move it back. Move it back. Tell me when it's, is that free? Move it back. Move it back. How is that? How is that? How is that? How's that? How's that? Are you healed? Is that good? Yes? Power from heaven. Just find out how she's going there, guys. Jesus. Jesus. Hello. You're doing very well. Come here. Come here. Come here, Sister California Bear Hat. Jesus. Just a little bit of uh, bit of mirth then. How are you? Lift your hands. There it is. There it is. There it is. Oh, whoa. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Josh, I haven't seen you tonight. Where have you been? You've been here the whole time? I haven't seen you. Come here. Yeah, what does she need? Yeah, I've prayed for it a few times. Had some results with autism. My God, touch her now. Hello, hello. The peace and the power of God come, right? That's, I'm good. Touch her right now. Let healing flow. Let this young lady come under the hand of God with total normality. I rebuke the condition. Autism, get off her life. In the name of Jesus, get off. Get off. Get off her life. Get off her life. Get off her life. Jesus, just touch her and release her. Sister here, quickly come in the white. Just come. Come here, my beloved brother, in whom I'm well pleased. How are you, Josh? You've got a great smile, haven't you? Where did you get that? Is it like Brad or like your mum? Your mum and dad are both good grinners, aren't they? Do you know something? You have the hand of God on your life. Never, ever let anyone or anything come against what you carry in God. Because if you will faithfully serve God as a young man, 
and you will stand before God and no matter what is said or what people would say or if they would reject you or stand against you, you would stand for Jesus and you would continue to hunger for God, he would raise you as a mighty man carrying a mighty anointing of the power of Almighty God. Come back and Jesus now, let your glory go right through him. Make him a man of God with full of might. Full of might. Full of power. Sister. Filled. 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 Look at him. Please bring him up here. I, I would just like to take a minute out from ministering here just to hold this boy. Bring him, please. Oh. No, I'm missing my grandkids. Hold the mic, please. Uh, uh, let me hear. He is just. Oh. Oh. I got 11 grand. How many? No, nine. Nine grandkids. And I love my grandkids. When I'm away, I catch up with all my mates, Josiah, Jake, Josh. A couple of years' time, this little bloke will be carrying the Bible for me. Can he, down the line, Josiah, because you'll be getting a bit big to do it, you've sort of handed it on to Jake the snake, and uh, he, he can take on the mantle for a short time, a couple of years, and then... I reckon this little bloke would be terrific for water, water work. You haven't been helping with the water tonight, by the way. Can you grab the water? Because I'm really desperate, guys. Yeah, yeah, you can do it tonight, Joe. But he, I just want to just see him. He just... I reckon standing in a meeting like this, holding a little baby like this, in the presence of God with great people all around you, is a bit like heaven. It's just a little bit like heaven. Whew. You might say I'm an old softy. And you're very right. He is... Ah, I've had Annie yesterday. She's as cuter than a button. Then this one. What do you reckon, Jake? Pretty handsome? What are your thoughts? Good looking little bloke, isn't he? Any relation to you? Cousin or anything? He's not a Spitsbergen. There's a lot of them though. Have you noticed that? There's quite a few of them around. Gee. Dan, have a look, mate. Have a look at him. Just have a look at that little bloke. Sorry to take time out like this, but, you know, I just can't help myself. Apologise. Phew. <laughs> Can I have him? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Come and take him. I don't want to drop him. Come over, sister. You have done very well. You did a great job and she helped. Terrific effort. <laughs> I love him. I love him. That, you get so nervous that you're going to drop him, don't you? They're just little, little, look at him. Look at him. Just a couple of weeks ago, there he was, just floating around. Little fingers. Anyone that looks at that little baby's little hand and tells me there's no God is a complete moron. <laughs> Caleb, I'm not messing around. Complete moron, don't you agree? Yeah. <sighs> what do you do with this meeting? What do you do with it? You find out if there's anyone here that doesn't know Jesus. How many people have had a healing either last night or tonight? You know you've been healed of something. Lift your hand high, up, up high. That's great. That's great. That's great. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, four hundred. That's just great. <laughs> you get your back healed. You've had your back healed. Man. Top, top. That's it. Straight off. Right hand. It's Jake. He's got it. Josiah. Notice that a bit of style? Quick twist. It was half off. Jack, top back on, please. Thanks. 
Beautiful work. How many feel that Jake has really got this? These guys take it serious, trust me. They take the job serious. I like that. Whatever job God gives you to do, if you do it seriously, God will honour it. Whether it's water carrying, Bible work. Question. How many people here have never come into a living relationship with Jesus? You know about him, but you've never found him. Maybe watching on the internet, you know about him, but you've never really encountered him. I was 27 years of age. I was a Methodist all those years. Never knew him. Went to church, never knew him. 27 years of age, sat in the back of a meeting one night, right in the back row. Heard the preaching. I was hung over from tequila. I used to drink it like water. Sitting in the back row, hair down the middle of my back somewhere, stinking of tequila, in the back row. Heard the gospel. Felt the power of God. Felt the reality of Jesus and suddenly knew that without him I had nothing. Preacher said, how many want to know him? I'd like to give your life to him. I thought, I don't like you as a preacher. You've got me very uneasy. I'm sweating and my heart has moved into my neck and is pounding just up under my left ear. I don't really want to acknowledge, but when he turned away, I put my hand up and said, yes. He swung around and said, yes, young man in the back row, third from the top. He said, come down and give your life to Christ. We had all these students from the school that I taught at and they knew that I was a bit mad. They didn't want to go down in front of them. So I stood at the back and resisted. And then suddenly, standing right in the back row with no one behind me, I felt a hand on my shoulder. As real, as real as that, on my shoulder. And I started to, my legs started to go and I, they started to walk. And I'm going, legs, you idiots, where are you going? And then I went down to the front and I felt demons go off me and stood at the front. And the pastor looked down and he'd been, God had been talking to him. And he said, Andrew, I'm going to give you a Timothy. Just like Paul had a Timothy, I'm going to give you a Timothy. And you're going to train him up into a man of God. He looked down at me and God said, that's your Timothy. I think he said, God, you're totally wrong. That's impossible. And he walked in and said, what's your name, son? I said, it's Tim. Tears ran down his face put his hand on my head, Holy Ghost went through my body, top to toe. I was 27, 66 this year, 39 years ago, next year be, I started church my first year, I'll be 40 years saved and in the ministry next year. I got saved in 74, that's right, yeah, 1974, got saved and went to Africa. I remember reading the Bible right through the jungle. That's 40 years ago. I've been saved 40 years. Oh, praise God. <laughs> 40 years. You wouldn't think I was that old. Two thirds of the way to a century. But Jesus came into my life. That's the greatest thing that ever happened. Have you had that experience? He wants to come into your life. Watching by way of television. I am so, I just feel like floating around. Wow. Don't you feel like floating around? I've got the same <laughs> feeling, Joe. If you'd like to give your life to Jesus, now's the moment. All across this building, how many people would like to say, yes, Jesus, I want you tonight? I wonder, watching at home, on the computer, you feel the power of God in your room and you'd like to give your life to Jesus. It's so simple. Is there anyone here tonight who would say, Jesus, I want you to come into my life. I want to come back to you. I want to find you for the first time. Would you lift your hand quickly? Just lift your hand so I can see it. So that's me. That's me tonight. God bless you, man. Someone else. Someone else. Someone else. Little fella back there. God bless you. Little hand back there. Anyone else? You look around for me, Jake. My, I'm, my eyes are not that crash hot. See any more? Anyone else? Thank you. Anyone at home? See if you can see anyone at home on the television. Anyone at home watching on your computer? It's your night. Let's stand together. Let's stand together. Is there anyone else who would like to say yes to Jesus? You want to give your heart to Jesus, young man in the bright shirt? Well, come down here. Dear sister, did, you prayed last night, gave your heart to the Lord last night, didn't you? 
Did you give your heart to Jesus yesterday? Well, pray right where you are now. Pray again. And uh, you come down this way. That'll save you coming down. We'll pray that prayer again for you. Come down here, champion. How are you? Good to see you. I love your shirt, man. That is the best T-shirt in this building. And you're wearing it. Congratulations. Well done. Pray this prayer with me, okay? Can you pray it too, dear lady, okay? Just pray it together. Dear Heavenly Father, pray it at home. Dear Heavenly Father, tonight I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God, that he died on the cross to take all my sins away. Tonight, Lord Jesus, I open my heart. I ask you to come in to change me, to make me new. I'm yours. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. He's come into your heart. Father, bless my brother in the fantastic shirt. What is your name, brother, fantastic shirt? Ezekiel. It's in the Bible. You got a brother. Are you twins? You got a brother? What's his name? Noah and Ezekiel. Bless him, Lord. Come up with him, Jeremy. Look after him. Touch this little fella. Come over here, please, Josiah. You've got some work to do. I want you to pray the prayer of faith with him right now. Just pray with him. Yep, your turn, Jake. Is that, yeah, that's it. Jake, just pray with him. Pray the blessing of God on him. I want you two to make it be real good mates with him. Jesus. All over the building, lift your hands. Oh, it's five to ten, so we're going home. But we've had a good night. We've had a good night. Come tomorrow night, same place. Same place, same time. Different message. Good to see people getting healed. Man, there's been an anointing here tonight. I'm going to hand back to the Right Honourable Dr. Bishop Mark Albert Sylvester George Spitzbergen the 13th. Jesus, Thank you, Father, for the glorious work of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for the power and the authority of your word and of your spirit. Father, we thank you for a moving of your mighty grace across San Diego, California, throughout Southern California, the state, this nation. Father, we thank you for shaking every heart and shaping every life tonight in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for the fire of the Holy Ghost resting upon every life, upon every house in Jesus' name. Father, I pray that every person be so filled <laughs> with your joy. <laughs> so filled with your glory, with your peace, with your love, oh God, that they actually believe that they're over in a realm called heaven. Father, I pray in Jesus' name for a heavenly realm to be found by every person here in this place, that it becomes a fire that spreads in every area of their lives, all those people that they acquainted with, in all their neighborhoods and communities, at work, school,
play wherever they go. Father, I'm asking you. <laughs> In Jesus' name. And I thank you, Lord, that you appointed us, oh God, to do this very thing. That whatever we ask, that you ordained us, you called us, you chose us to bear this kind of fruit. Whew. Whatever we ask, Father, you'll do it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, we'll see you back here. Come back tomorrow night. Go find people. Bring them. Listen, hook up with us in faith, in confidence, in assurance, in expectation, in, in, in a knowledge that what God said he would do, he's definitely doing. That there will be mighty signs and wonders. There's so many people. I was sitting here just captivated tonight by the presence of the Lord. Couldn't even hardly move. Thinking and considering all of the thousands and tens of thousands of desperate people in this city who called upon the name of the Lord Jesus and they need, they need to be healed, they need to be set free, they need to be delivered, they, know, they never felt the joy, they live in torment. I want you to participate with the living God, with the Lord Jesus Christ in what we're doing right now and invite people to come. I want you to grab people. I want you to come them, uh, bring them. I want you to come with them. I want you to let the Spirit of the Lord God fill you with the grace that He's giving. The fact of it is, I just believe that the Lord is going to bypass all those things. He's going to fill you with His grace and ability to be so confident that when you bring people in this place and you present them before the Lord Jesus Christ, not before any man, but before the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ, whom we represent, that they are going to get healed. And, and it's going to be even like those who, those four guys who had a friend who wasn't able to help themselves, but they had laid hold on him. I'm not even sure if he had faith or even believed or even wanted them to take him where they took him. But Jesus, seeing their faith, and I believe he was talking about the four that went and grabbed him, Hallelujah. Whew. Said to the man, your sins be forgiven you. Take up your bed and walk. Jesus, our Savior, the same yesterday, today, and forever, is looking for a group of people, a community of people, anyone who will believe and will stand and testify of all these things concerning him so that he can stand in our midst. The Holy Spirit can be released to do what it is he wants to do because we're willing to cooperate with him. That's all we got to do. Just be willing to stand here and cooperate with Him. I want you to lift your hands towards heaven one last time. Now, Father, I thank you for the anointing of the Spirit upon each and every person's life here. I thank you that you are raising up every single person here to do great signs and wonders, to walk in the manifested sons of the living God, the, that glorious authorization and authority that you gave to everyone who would receive. Father, I thank you for strengthening them and refreshing them tonight as they go to bed and as they go to sleep. That those that get up in the, in the morning and go to work, they'll be refreshed. They'll be so refreshed and so strengthened by your spirit. They'll, be, come, they'll come running to the meeting tomorrow night and, and come running in a sense to where they also have time to stop and pick up a few folks on the way. Amen. 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 That you and I, you and I are going to do this. We're going to hook up our faith with the faith of Jesus Christ. You see, we're going to hook up our purpose with the divine purpose of the Holy Spirit. And we're going to lay hold on this thing, that good thing that God wants to do. We're going to see signs, wonders, and miracles. We're going to see hurting, desperate, dying people receive the power of God as they see and experience the moving of the water. In Jesus' name, this is happening. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I fix right now every healing in Jesus' name.
Satan can't take it away. In the name of the living God, you'll walk out of here. Every person retaining the miracle power of God upon your life. It'll multiply and it'll go to other people's lives around you. And this, will, this power of God, the signs, wonders, and miracles will spread like a fire. Holy Ghost, everywhere you go. Amen. Amen. Find a bunch of evil, hug them, tell them that you love them, bless them in Jesus' name, especially if you've never seen them before. Hallelujah.